praise God. That was the great Billy Jones. Save your world. Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're back here again. This is the Worldwide Bloodcast bringing you freedom from religious bondage by reminding you of the simple gospel. Hallelujah. Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he rose again the third day, justifying us. Oh, friends, and he is coming back to judge. Friends, this is the simple gospel. Thank you for joining us today on YouTube, on Facebook. And um, what, if you, however you're joining us, uh, please leave a comment uh, in the chat if you're watching this live because uh, I now have uh, enabled where we can uh, converse uh, through this platform, okay? Uh, so I'm... I've got my webcam set off to the side, and we're going to be going uh, just line by line through the scripture tonight. This is completely unrehearsed, uh, unscripted, okay? Um, I was just waiting all day to, to figure out what I was going to uh, go through tonight. So uh, this is uh, going to be the book of Mark, okay? I don't know how far we're going to get in on this, um, but we'll, uh, we'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> one way or the other okay um so um as i said uh join me on the chat uh i can't um i'm not so much sure if i can um watch the uh the youtube chat i can see it on here i don't know how much i can i can play along with it um but um if you're watching this on youtube please go join our uh, Facebook page, Revival and History, the et sign, a little and sign, Revival and History by Never Forget the Blood, or just um, do the at uh, revivalhistory.nftb, and you'll find us there. Uh, and on YouTube, we are, if you're watching this on Facebook, come over on YouTube. We are on the Worldwide Bloodcast, okay? The Worldwide Bloodcast. And uh, like I said, we're freeing you from religious bondage by reminding you of the simple gospel. Friends, in my, in my early years in Christianity, um, I was uh, just so bound in legalism and works, but God, by his grace, set me free through the means of studying the word. So, so thankful, so thankful. Uh, for the word of God. And uh, so I just want to share this experience with you. Uh, this is, um, you know, I, I do this kind of as fun and as a bonus. Uh, hello, Dana. God bless you. Uh, you, you missed the intro. Uh, we, uh, you might have to rewind and, and go back. I was playing uh, one of Billy's, uh, one of my favorite songs of Billy's, Save Your World. Hallelujah. Um, so, uh, yeah, share this on your, uh, on your timeline, uh, on, you know, join us in the chat. Um, and, um, you know, I'll be able to, uh, you know, we can, we can just discuss this together. So, uh, we're going to be going through Mark chapter one. Uh, and again, this is just, Hey, Hey, Leslie, how you doing? This is just completely, um, unrehearsed, unscripted. Um, I did a, uh, three out last week, last Friday, I did a three-hour study uh, on the book of Galatians and uh, cut it up into different parts. Tonight, I'm going to go through the book of Mark, and I'm just going to, just however far we get into it, um, okay? So uh, as you uh, come and go, that's fine. Uh, please stick around and join in on this discussion, okay? So I'm going to be reading from uh, the, the King James Version. It's uh, familiar with everybody, and... Uh, you know, it's, um, it's copyright free too. <laughs> um, so, uh, public domain, that's great. So uh, I'm not going to be looking in the camera the whole time because I'm going to be reading off of the screen, but, uh, yeah, please, um, please join in on this. Okay. So Mark chapter one, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. 
John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And I'll, I'll read through and then, uh, then we'll go back and comment. It's kind of the pattern that, um, that, I'll, that we'll be going through on this. Okay. Um, so, uh, the voice of one crying into the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and girded and with a girdle of skin around his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, there comes one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway he come up, coming up out of the water, he saw the signs opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And th there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit drove him, driveth, drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. And now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and, his, and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship, with the hired servants and went after him. Okay, so I'm a uh, I'm gonna pause right there. We'll come pick back up at 21 uh, when we uh, when we get down to. Let me see. I can highlight that. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about that yet. Okay, so uh, verse one, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he's saying this is the um, you know this is how the gospel began. Okay, uh, and and actually, if you read, you can read the book of Mark in like an hour and a half. Uh, it's it's the shortest of the of the four gospels, um, and I mean everything just reads like like newspaper headlines, uh, just going straight through this. So, um, you know, that's a it's really a really good thing to sit down and just just read the words straight through, uh, you know, like pick a book and read it straight through. Now, like some of like uh, Ezekiel and Isaiah, you know, it might take you a little bit, but, um, you know, especially like the, these epistles and the gospels, it's, uh, it's so sweet to just read the word, uh, straight through it. Like in one sitting, I'm saying, you know, like reading the whole book of Romans and as, uh, you know, just as a, uh, like reading it as a sermon, like sitting down through it all the way. Um, but, uh, okay, so uh, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Okay, so Mark is telling us here that the prophets wrote about what was about to take place, the Old Testament prophets, okay? Uh, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. Okay, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Okay, uh, so John, this is John the baptizer, John ba the Baptist, okay, um, the cousin of Jesus, as we learned from the other gospels. 
And just looking at Mark here, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And if you go through, uh, and like I said, this is totally unscripted, unrehearsed. I'm just uh, going through the word and, and, you know, this is, you know, just things that are coming to my mind as I'm, as I'm doing this, please uh, comment below so we can discuss. Uh, God bless you. Um, so John baptized in the wilderness. Now, when in uh, the book of Acts, when Paul's coming through um, and, uh, you know, he comes to uh, Ephesus, right? And he asks them, uh, you know, what did you, uh, you know, what were you baptized into? And they said, well, we just, we just heard of John's baptism. Okay. So they weren't, um, they weren't baptized as Christians. Uh, they weren't baptized in, um, in the name, you know, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they were. It was the baptism of John. Uh, that's all that they knew. So it was a baptism of repentance. Now, what's interesting is that the the Jews uh, at the time did have a um, a, a form of um, well, it was it wasn't a form. It was baptism for uh, Gentile converts. Okay, uh, and for uh, people that had. Uh, become uh, unclean through, you know, things like, um, you know, touching dead bodies and, and things like that. There's ritualistic cleansing. But this baptism, John is calling the, the Jews to be baptized in repentance, okay? And, you know, this whole thing was, uh, you know, if you're a Gentile coming to Christianity or uh, coming to Judaism, okay, uh, then you need to be, uh, you know, baptized and then you'll be considered a, a God fearer, you know, like Cornelius. He was, he was, he feared, he was a God fearer. Okay. Uh, so God fears were uh, Gentiles who uh, converted to uh, Judaism, the way, the way of the Lord. Okay. Uh, as revealed at the time. So uh, uh, John baptized in the wilderness, preaching the baptism of repentance or the remission of sins, remission, Re, what, you know, you think about cancer, okay, that's, it, we're, you know, it, it, it's there, but it goes in remission, okay, so, you know, that's, that's something that's interesting, you know, when you first come to Christ, uh, you know, when this is something, you know, part of our theme uh, in this, in this channel, uh, which is, uh, you know, freeing you from religious bondage. So, uh, you know, so many times, so many times, Christians uh, in so many circles, they come to faith. Hey, Brother John, God bless you, brother. And uh, hey, John, we, uh, you watched a replay on this. I was playing uh, one of Brother Billy's songs in the intro, um, one of my favorite ones. But uh, so we're going through the book of Mark, okay? Um, and uh, if you want to, uh, you know, comment below as we're going through, I've, you know, right now we're looking at, uh, chapter one and I'm just going line by line. This is just unrehearsed. Okay. Um, and just, uh, you know, just commenting my, my thoughts and, and, you know, just things that, uh, I think would be beneficial, but as you know, is the, the theme of, you know, this, uh, this channel freeing you from religious bondage by reminding you of the simple gospel. And it's something that, <laughs> that uh, our precious brother that's gone on to be with the Lord was so uh, instrumental in my life uh, to influence me. Uh, and just, you know, there's a whole lot of freedom in not having to be somebody. And, you know, friends, just to have a, a, an honest, intimate relationship with Jesus. You know, that's all that God requires of us, to be, have an honest, intimate relationship with him and we will see the remission of sins you know when we when we come to Christ and in you know when when we first come to to faith and repentance you're not going to see a perfect uh you're not going to see a perfect repentance okay um you know you're not going to see um you know just a like a totality of perfection right away uh you know it's a it's a, we i i completely despise uh something that's out in the world today known as progressive christianity uh, because it's it's not christianity at all it's uh it's antinomianism but um the um we we do progress there is progressive sanctification okay because as as you 
develop this intimate and honest relationship with Jesus, then the things of earth will grow strangely dim, okay? And as you just, um, you know, the, the sanctification, running after Jesus, you know, looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, just looking at him, sitting at his feet, beholding his face, and, you know, just just enjoying him in relationship, okay? then you will be sanctified because he is perfected forever. Those that are being sanctified, right? So uh, John preached the uh, in the wilderness. He baptized and was preaching the baptism of repentance. So he was calling the Jews to repent. Right? Uh, he was calling the Jews to repent. This was God's chosen people. What were they supposed to be repenting of? Uh, I mean, just uh, the uh, well, the prophets hadn't spoken in about 400 years. But you look at all, uh, I mean, just all, all the, the messages of the prophets uh, throughout the Old Testament. It's calling God's people to repentance, okay? Calling God's chosen people to repent and, and come back to the Father. All right, so um, there, and there went out, uh, verse 5, uh, and there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem, and were baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, There comes one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. And you'll... you'll um, I can't remember if it's in the book of Mark or not. We're just going to go through this. Uh, I mean, this might end up being a series because here I am about uh, 20 minutes in and we're just um, we're just eight verses down, right, um, on the first chapter and there's 16 verses. So we'll just see how far we get on this. Um, but I uh, hope to do this live every Friday night. I uh, can't commit to a, to a certain time right now because... Uh, I I don't have a dedicated studio space, and all this is just set up in my in my kitchen, um, and uh, I have I have three children uh, under the age of four years old uh, in uh, an 800 square foot house. So uh, until I can get some dedicated studio space set up, um, you know this will just the live stuff will just have to be when it is. Uh, but um, if you're on if you watch on the YouTube channel. Uh, click the the bell to get notified, and you know you'll get a you'll get a buzz and a, a notification on your phone uh, when we go live. Okay. Um, so uh, John said he preached, saying, "There comes one mightier than I." There are people coming up. John was a prophet. John was preaching. You'll notice. Uh, I don't know if it's in the the Gospel of John of uh, Mark or not. I can't remember right offhand, but. We do know from you know the the gospels from the narrative of scripture that Jesus called John the greatest the greatest of those born of women. He was the greatest prophet that ever lived. And he said the one the the, the least in the kingdom is greater than him. And yet, you know, John is the greatest of the prophets, and. He says, there's one coming after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I'm not, I'm not even worthy. I mean, this was the job for the lowliest of servants. And you notice, now he says, I'm not even worthy. Now this, this is a guy that had, um, I mean, you look at uh, the book of Luke, right? Um which uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, right? So we haven't, uh, you know, if you're reading the Bible straight through, you're, you have, probably haven't come to that yet, but uh, many of us are already familiar with it. Uh, you know, Luke was, um, you know, Luke, Luke's account, uh, in the first few chapters, he tells about the birth of John the Baptist and, you know, how his, his father and mother were, uh, you know, of the, of the Levites, right? So, um the you know his father Zacharias was serving in the temple, and uh, an angel appeared to him and prophesied his, uh, John's birth. Even though uh, you know both Zachariah and uh, and his wife Elizabeth were well aged in years, 
and uh, you know, they weren't, they weren't sure they were, were going to have kids. And, uh, you know, actually his dad didn't believe the angel, the, <laughs> but, uh, you know, God's, God will watch over his word to perform it, right? <laughs> Whether you believe it or not, his word will come to pass. Okay. What God says will come to pass. And so, um, you know, the, but you're going to have a whole lot of freedom and joy in just believing <laughs> believe in him when he speaks, taking him at his word. Because what happened is to John the Baptist's dad, Zacharias, right? He uh, he didn't believe the word. <laughs> and so the angel said, okay, just so that, it, like, I, I'm, I'm going to prove it to you, right? So just when, uh, just so that you know, uh, I'm really telling you the truth, you're not going to be able to speak until the boy comes. And surely, <laughs> by the time he started noticing the bump, he would have believed, right? But the word stayed true. It wasn't until the boy was born that he was that he um, that he that he uh, was able to speak again. But uh, so uh, you know the prophecy uh, that came to um, you know about John before he was born was that he was going to be a Nazarite. Okay, not uh, now Nazarite, uh, you know, not necessarily someone from Nazareth, but uh, it was a certain type of vow like Samson. Okay, um, it was a certain type of vow, a lifestyle of uh, consecration to the Lord. All right, no, uh, I mean, no alcohol, uh, can't cut your hair, um, you know, don't, I mean, he, he can't even touch raisins. <laughs> That's how, that's how strict this lifestyle was, right? And uh, and now it says that you know John was. I mean, look, he was clothed with camel's hair. It wasn't, um, you know, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind, you know, or, or you know, or like because you know those are someone in soft raiment, right? Uh, those that are in soft raiment are in king's houses. But you went out to see a prophet, and I say unto you, more than a prophet, right? John the Baptist was more than a prophet. He was the one that was preparing the way of the Lord, right? And we see in the, in the uh, hey, brother Jimbo, God bless you, brother. Uh, we're going through the book of Mark. And, uh, you know, just, um, um, you know, comment below. Uh, anything you have to add to this, uh, this just unrehearsed. I'm just having fun going through the word. Uh, so God bless you all. Uh, and. So John the Baptist was clothed with camel's hair. He wasn't, I mean, man, he was living a life of consecration, right? He was living a life of, of just devotion to God. He knew he had one purpose. He knew what his purpose was, was to prepare the way of the Lord. Okay, so friends, we, I mean, you've got to know what your purpose is, what God has called you to. You've got to know that because you're not going to be satisfied with it, with anything else. I mean, if you if you are a child of God, if you have, if if God has called you for something specific, if He has anointed you for a ministry for a certain ministry, you're not going to be satisfied with putting on Saul's armor. Okay, you need to go find your five smooth stones out of the river, right? Um, okay, you're not going. Um, it's I mean, there's so much, so much we can go into on that, um, and I might I might end up going more into that. Um, but uh, he was, he had a, a a leather belt, right? Camel's hair. Who else does that sound like? Well, if you're familiar with the, the books of the kings, right? It sounds like Elijah, right? And and what else comes out that we that we find out uh, from, you know, the full counsel of the word that, you know, the there was a, you know, the prophecy that Elijah must come before the Messiah, right? And Jesus said, Elijah did come, but nobody wanted to listen to him. They didn't receive him, right? So he was, And it says, they realized he was talking about John the Baptist, right? He came in the, in the spirit and power of Elijah. So um, he was clothed with camel's hair. Uh, uh, man, that's, um, I, I had one time a, a camel hair, uh, uh, camel skin uh, sport coat, but... Um, you know, it was it was pretty well tailored. Uh, I, I doubt that uh, you know that this camel's hair. Now, um, you know, this is 
this is not something that's going to be uh very uh comfortable okay um you know just he was uh, probably not scantily clad but definitely not um you know luxur not not in luxurious robes okay um you know he w didn't have his length and phylacteries and you know making pretense in the marketplaces right he had his purpose and he was he just set out to do uh god's work right what god had called him to um and he preached saying as he was eating locusts and wild honey okay um and <laughs> um a, and we find out uh you know from a, another um from another part of the narrative of the gospels that uh you know G the there were some that came and questioned Jesus saying uh you know why do uh John's disciples fast often and yet you know like you're always eating and drinking with with the fellas <laughs> but you know he says um you know so we can derive from that that John was fasting often if his disciples were fasting often then surely he was fasting often right uh, because as goes the pulpit, uh, so goes the congregation. Okay, so um, you know leaders uh, <laughs> are influential on their people, uh, whether you uh, uh, you know whether they try to or not. If you're a father, okay, if you have children, you are you are influential on your children. Okay, whether you know like you're you are a leader. Okay. If God has put people under your authority, uh, then you are a leader, all right? Uh, now, you're either going to be there for uh, for blessing or for judgment, okay? So, you know, like, uh, I mean, like, okay, if you're a father, all right, your children are going to learn from you. You are teaching them, okay? If you're a father or a mother, your children are learning from you. So you've got to be careful that you're walking uprightly, okay? And circumspectly, right? I mean, you know, you've you if if you have people under you, you are a leader. Okay, you're either you're either a good one or a bad one, right? <coughs> so, um, and he so John was uh, fasting often. And his main meal apparently was locusts and wild honey. So I mean, my goodness, you think about. Uh, I mean, have you have you ever seen a grasshopper try to catch a grasshopper, man? Like, I mean, those things are those things are slick. You think about how hard he had to and wild honey, <laughs> wild honey. All right, he wasn't he wasn't uh, you know he didn't have a um, he didn't have a, a uh, what do you call it. Uh, I don't know. I got some beekeeper friends, but I, you know, like a uh, customized, you know, a domestic hive or something like that, right? Um, it was wild honey. So, uh, you know, and for him to chase down locusts to catch, I mean, you know, you ever have a, a cricket show up in your bathroom and you try to, you know, try to grab it to, <laughs> to get it you know get it out of your house right well i mean he was trying to catch these to eat okay and wild honey just think about that you, wild honey okay how i mean what do you have to go through to get wild honey you're living out in the desert and all you've got is your camel's hair coat and a, and a leather belt okay maybe a staff What's what's it gonna? Uh, it's a good thing he was close to the to the Jordan River, right? Because if he was, um, if he was, you know, catching the wild honey, he'd probably have to knock down a hive and run away from the bees. Okay, so you know he definitely was not living in luxury. Okay, that's the picture that we get here. Okay, John was clothed with camel's hair and girded with a with a, a, a skin around his loins. He did eat locusts and wild honey, fasting often eating locusts and wild honey and and he preached saying there comes one after there comes one mightier than i after me you know people were coming after him 
They were coming to be baptized of him and uh, confessing and repenting their sin, of their sins. And everybody from all of the land of from all the land of Judea, verse five, and they of Jerusalem, and they were all baptized of him in the river. So I mean, he had a big following, right? And yet he says, "There comes one after me, mightier than I." And I, like you all, you all are thinking I'm somebody, but I'm telling you, I'm not even worthy to do the job of the least of the servants. And that yet, what happens after that? Later on, right after, I mean, you know, three years after this, right? Jesus, the night that he was betrayed, after the supper, rose from rose from the table. Put on a towel around his waist, put water in a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet. Okay. I mean, that's I mean, Jesus is the the you know the greatest example of everything, right? The the greatest example of leadership, right? Especially church leadership. So if you you know if you're a church leader and you know you're not you're not willing to symbolically uh you know i mean, i will either literally or metaphorically wash feet if you're not willing to clean the toilet i mean you know like what what are you doing calling yourself a leader right the servant jesus did the job of the lowliest of servants for those that were following him okay? um now, i mean we can talk about paradigms and and all that stuff that's yeah uh you know that happened in um in Acts 7, right, when, um, you know, the church had grown so much. I mean, Jesus says, if I, being your master, have washed your feet, you ought to, all, you ought to wash one another's feet. So the apostles were, were practicing that in the beginning, but then the, the church had grown so much, so fast, so quick, they realized, hey, we can't keep up. So we got to point seven other men full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Friends, you in the, in the first century church, you were not even worthy <laughs> to spoon out potato salad at the potluck unless you were markedly filled with the Holy Spirit. And then what do we got now? I mean, like what's what's it take now to be a to be a, a deacon or a pastor, right? What's it take? Hmm. Well, John said, this guy coming after me, I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. I have baptized you indeed with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And straightway, coming up out of the water, well, you you've got some uh, you got some ecclesiology going on there, and uh, you know there's there's Christians that have been fighting, <laughs> uh, debating about you know the mode of baptism for you know for uh, centuries, millennia, right? But um, something you'll notice, uh, I mean, it's, he says he comes straight up out of the water, right? Uh, and it was in a river, in the Jordan River. So, I mean, there's some Christians that'll, that'll tell you, oh, you must be baptized in a, um, you know, in a living body of water. So you got to find a river or a creek, and and you got to go all the way under, you know, and 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 uh, or or don't dip back, but you got to go straight down because Jesus comes straight up out of the water. Well, that's cool, but you know, I mean, like, uh, there's um. I, I don't think we have to get rote about that. You know, um, if you read in um, the Didache, which was the earliest of the church documents outside of the canon, okay, uh, the Didache, I've got uh, on the YouTube channel, Worldwide Bloodcast, um, I'll probably link it up here, um, you know, after I get done with this live stream, but um, the... 
uh, the Didache has a section on on baptism, and this is you know it's not scripture, okay? It's not it's not inspired, it's not canon, but it, it just gives us a picture of the practices of the early church, okay? And and what and what they how they thought about things. It's even got stuff about eschatology on there, okay? It's it's from like um like right after uh, John wrote Revelation. Okay, so it's, I mean it's right around that time, um, and it, I mean it just it's called the Didache, which means the teaching or the instruction, and you know they it was dubbed you know the teaching of the apostles. So um, this is you know there's some arguments about um, you know who who actually wrote it, but uh, we we do see um, you know just some insights on what uh, on on what the early church actually believed. Okay. Um, so one of them in which uh, the, um, you know, the section on baptism, it talks about that. And it talks about, uh, you know, yeah, if you can find living water, use that. And, uh, you know, if you, if you got, uh, you know, if it's, if you got cold water, use that. Um, but, uh, you know, just don't use lukewarm water if, well, but if that's all you got, basically, you know, you can use that. Uh, and, you know, it says if you, um you know, if you can, if you can dip them all away, that's the way to go. But, you know, if, if water's scarce, you know, just, uh, make sure you, you, you splash them three times, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, there's a lot of freedom. Um, God's given us a lot more freedom than, than we give ourselves. Um, you know, and, and, you know, just the, the poignancy that, you know, the, in the Didache, uh, you know, the early church had a lot of freedom. What's up, Thomas? Good evening, brother. Uh, we're just going through um, the book of Mark here, line by line, and just um, you know, just commenting on it as we go. And uh, if you want, if you want to contribute anything, just uh, you know, hop in the comments down there too. Um, so, uh, and straightway, so you know, that's how Jesus was baptized, um, and he saw. The heavens opened. John saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. All right. So look here. This is a picture of the Trinity. This is a picture of the Trinity. John. The, you know, the, like the, the last of the Jewish prophets, the last of the Old Testament prophets, right? As there came a voice, he saw, okay, verse 10, he saw the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. So you've got all three persons of the Trinity here present at Jesus' baptism. I mean, Jesus is being baptized. When he comes up out of the water, the Spirit descends on him like a dove. John saw the Spirit descend on him, and a voice came from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son. Okay, so you've got the Father speaking, the Spirit descending, and Jesus <laughs> rising. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, modalism is a heresy. Modalism uh, is a, an ancient heresy that teaches that there's only one person of God and you know, he exists in like three forms, you know, and that there's, um, uh, we're just coming past, uh, St. Patrick's day. And, uh, you know, I'll put that, uh, I'll put that funny video up here to, um, when, uh, I get done with live stream, but, um, man, you know, there's, um, you really should study early church history. Um, you know, because there's nothing new. I mean, all the error that's out today, all all the the garbage that's going around is nothing new. I mean, and even in the Didache, uh, there's oh well, I'll, uh, I'll save that for another time. Uh, you watch that. Uh, just read it yourself. Um, you know, I got a video where I'm reading through it. Um, but um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so uh, modalism uh, teaches that there's only one person of God. Uh, and that the you know that the modalism teaches that the Trinity is false, but we see right here in the Scripture, right here, verse ten and eleven, right? We're freeing you from religious bondage by reminding you of the simple gospel. 
the Spirit descended upon Jesus, and the Father spoke from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So there's the Trinity, okay? Very clearly uh, articulated. Um, and immediately, the Spirit driveth him, or drove him, into the wilderness. Okay? Immediately, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. So, Jesus was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness. Friends, do you ever feel like like God is is absent in your life? I mean, my goodness, I've had I I just like come out of this like you know spiritual like high, right? This season of of just like you know I could conquer the world, and then I just feel like I'm in a desert in a wasteland and like i'm you know i mean for like a whole week i've just been uh i've just been feeling so uh down and useless and like i mean even um you know in like you know i mean man i was like witnessing to everybody out on the streets and um like here this past week i just you know like i it's i feel like i'm in a wilderness right but um it says here but man, like God, I mean, this happens like all throughout. In the promised land, there's mountains and valleys and even plateaus, okay? Um, so, I mean, you just you just keep on your journey because you'll get through the, if you feel like you're in a valley right now, God is going to bring you through it, okay? God's going to bring you through this valley that you're facing right now. I promise you, you keep pursuing after him in an honest, intimate relationship with Jesus. I mean, prayer and Bible, prayer and reading your Bible. I mean, that's the, yeah, but per, but really pursuing him. I mean, you know, not just saying prayers, right? Not just repeating vain repetitions like the, like the heathen, right? But I mean, actually, uh, um, you know, like uh, C.S. Lewis talked about uh, the, the nakedness in prayer. I mean, just coming to God honestly and openly and just coming before him. And just laying everything out. God, I'm so angry at these people. I'm, I don't know what to do. Um, I, I, I just feel like my life's falling apart. I mean, just, just come to him honestly. And just rest. Rest on him. Stop trying to get it all under control yourself. Okay? You need to learn to, to, to stop striving in the flesh. And just seek after his face. Seriously. The, the horse is prepared for battle, but the victory is of the Lord's, okay? You have only to be silent, for the Lord is fighting for you. God is fighting for you. Do not avenge yourselves, but give, but give place to wrath. Give place to wrath. Do not avenge yourselves, friend. Hallelujah. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Mark's account here of Jesus being in the wilderness is just one verse. <laughs> um, it says you know, he was driven into the wilderness and he was there in the wilderness 40 days being tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Now, the wild beasts, when um, Jesus is hanging on the cross, He's quoting uh, Psalms 22, where um, you know he says like the you know he's the uh, talking about the beasts, and we can see that that's you know it's talking about the the powers of darkness, right? So Satan and you know the wild beasts, the, um, you know this this could be you know talking about you know bears and and lions and stuff, but you know I'm pretty sure with the with the full counsel of the Word of God, it's talking about Satan and the angels. Okay, so the wild beasts, and he's talking about, um, you know, it could it could be, okay. I'm not making a, an authoritative claim on that, but I'm saying, um, you know, this very well could be, you know, that you know Jesus was being, uh, you know, confronted with with all the hordes of hell, um, there are all the powers of darkness, and but it says the angels ministered unto him. Okay, uh, of course Luke and uh, Mark. Uh, Luke and Matthew go into more detail on what happened there, um, but 
Jesus was tempted of Satan. Okay, um, we have a high priest who is not unfamiliar with our weaknesses, but he is very familiar. He's he's been tempted in every way that we could ever be tempted, yet without sin. Okay. Jesus was fully man, yet he never sinned. Jesus was fully man and fully God. We've already seen that here in the scripture. Jesus was fully God. Jesus was fully man. Hallelujah. And yet he never sinned. So friends, I mean, you know, looking at um, Matthew and, and, and Luke, and we can see that uh, Jesus' uh, temptations pretty much be summed up in prove yourself, prove God, and protect yourself. Okay? You take the easy way out. Right? You don't have to suffer. Okay? Just bow down to me, and I'll give you all these kingdoms of the world. Okay? That's the other one, prove God. You know, if you really are the son of God, just throw yourself off the temple. I mean, he's he's he he told you, he'd he'd protect you, right? God said he would put the angels around you. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. It is written, you shall only serve the Lord your God, and Him alone shall you worship. Okay? Um, and uh, I mean, if you prove yourself, prove yourself. Come on, prove yourself. It's the devil talking. Come on, prove yourself. Because if you really are the Son of God, you you could command these stones to become bread. But it is written. <sighs> Come on, devil. I don't have to prove myself. It's written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I don't have to prove God. Because God will prove himself. You shall not, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. I don't have to protect. I don't have to prove. I don't have to take the easy way out. Because I know what I came here for. Shall serve the Lord your God. For this reason I came. To suffer and die. And rise again the third day. I'm going to endure the suffering of that cross. For the joy that's set before me. Because all of my lost lambs are going to hear this gospel and they're going to repent and they're going to believe. Friend, if you have not put your faith in Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, His blood is sufficient. His blood is sufficient. It is appointed once for a man to die and after this, the judgment. Friends, if you are in Christ, you would just repent Put your faith in Jesus. All old things have passed away, and behold, all things will become new. This message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. And you, you laugh and mock, and you say, "Ah, oh, that's that's just you know that old time. You know why why is this guy in his thirties, like even you know in two thousand twenty one, why is he even talking about this stuff?" It's because Jesus is real. In in two thousand five. God saved me. I was brought from death to life. Okay. Called out to him. And he shed his love on me. All the darkness left. Call on the name of Jesus. If you feel like you're in darkness, if you feel like you're being surrounded by the horrors of hell, if you're being tortured in your, in your soul and in your mind, Call out to Jesus. Call out on the name of Jesus. In faith. Friends, I'm telling you, he will answer. He said, I will never turn away any who come to me. Hallelujah. Come unto me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll give you rest. Hallelujah. Give up. Give up on trying to make it. Give up on trying to change yourself. Give up on, on, on trying to improve yourself. Just come home. Just come home. Come home to the Father. Oh, friends, he's waiting for you. 
Oh, my dearly beloved, he is waiting for you, dear soul. God is waiting for you to return. Just come home. Stop running. Just come home. Hallelujah. Well, um, that's about an hour. <laughs> uh, we got down to um, to verse uh, uh, 13. Okay. Um, quickly here, let's, let's just do a couple more verses. So now, um, so now after that, John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and the saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. We're going to have to pick up again because, uh, and I, I might just start this live stream over, but, um, you know, friends repent ye and believe the gospel I'm Telling you there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to tr trust and obey, okay? Um, so uh, God bless you all. If uh, this video is a blessing to you, um, you know, share this. Uh, hit that uh, like button down below. And, um, you know, just um, until next time, <laughs> just see to it that no man steal thy crown and never forget the blood.